Right, have some fun with trigonometry. Uh, for this question, we're given a triangle PQR. We're told that PQR is 90 degrees, and we're given two of the sides as labelled on the diagram. And we're asked for the value of the angle X. So we'll start this trig question like we do any other by labelling the sides opposite adjacent and hypotenuse. In this case here, um, we now have to decide which sides to involve. And because we want the angle, we just have to use the two sides that we know, which is the opposite and adjacent. Um, now, which trig ratio involves opposite and adjacent? Whichever way you remember it, make sure you learn it. It's tan. Um, so tan theta is opposite over adjacent. That's the definition. So in my case, theta, the angle is x. So tan x is equal to the opposite side, which is 5, divided by the adjacent side, which is 12.5. Um, and whenever you've got tan x, cos x, or sin x, you need to use the inverse of that to find the angle. So you need to use inverse tan, or tan to the minus 1 on your calculator. It's shift tan um, of 5 over 12.5. And we simply type that in, and it gives us our answer, which is 21.801 dot 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 degrees. Uh, but we want one decimal place, so the answer is 21.801. 8 degrees to one decimal place. Okay, next question. Um, we're given a triangle again, and we're told that ABC is 90 degrees, which is as it appears on the diagram. Um, we're given an angle and a side, and this time we want to find a length, BC. So I'm going to call this length Y, I can label it on my diagram as Y. And then we'll start the normal trig approach to a question by labelling the sides. So I know my opposite is opposite the angle, the other non-hypotenuse side is the adjacent, and there is the hypotenuse, the longest side there, opposite the right angle. And I want to involve the hypotenuse because that's the side that I know, and I want to involve the adjacent because it's the side I want to know. So which trig ratio involves adjacent and hypotenuse? That's cosine. And the definition is cos theta is adjacent divided by hypotenuse. So put in the values that we've got. Theta is 24 degrees. The adjacent side is y, that's what I'm looking for. And the hypotenuse is 6.2. Now in this equation, y is already in the numerator. I just need to get rid of the 6.2. So the inverse of division is multiplying. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 6.2, giving me 6.2 cos 24 degrees is equal to y. And now we just stick it in the calculator. Um, so y is 6.2 times cos 24, which comes to 5.6639 dot 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 dot. Um, now here, um, we want it to three sig figs. So the third sig fig is the 6. The 3 comes after that, telling me not to round it up. So I leave it as 5.66 centimetres to three significant figures. OK, question 34. Um, First thing to note is it isn't a right angle triangle, so don't start with Sokoto or anything like that. Um, we are given two sides and the included angle and asked to find the area. So when we have two sides and the angle in between them, we can use this formula, half AB sine C. Um, doesn't matter what A, B and C are, as long as A and B are two sides and C is the angle in between them. So the two sides are 11.7, 28.3, and my angle C is 67 degrees. So we just put that all into the formula. Half times 11.7 times 28.3 times sine 67 degrees. And provided you put it in carefully enough, you should get the area as 152.39 dot 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 dot. Um, and note the units are meters squared, because all the lengths are in meters. But to three significant figures, the third sig figure is the two, and we don't round up, so 152 metres squared to three significant figures. Part B, calculate the length of AC. Um, now we've got two sides, and we want the third side, and we have the angle. Um, you just need to get used to spotting what to do here. Um, this is a case for the cosine rule, because the cosine rule involves three sides and an angle. Um, so this is what it looks like on your formula sheet a squared is b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cos a. The point is that a, your angle, and a, your side, um, are opposite each other. 
So little a is that what thing that we want to find out, the question mark, and big A, the angle, is 67 degrees. And the other two sides make up your B and your C. So AC squared, the side that we want, is 11.7 squared plus 28.3 squared. And then it's just minus 2 times those two lengths multiplied. So 2 times 11.7 times 28.3 times cos of the angle. So times cos 67 degrees. Um, so we can actually just put the whole of the right hand side into our calculators as long as we're careful about it. So AC squared, when you work it out, comes to 679.03 and it goes on and on and on. Leave that in your calculator because the next step is to square root it. So you can press square root ants and you should get uh, 26.058 and so on and so on. Um, and of course we want to round that. We want to round it to three sig figs. Third sig fig is the zero, but the five after it tells me to round the zero up to one. So 26.1 meters is what AC is to three significant figures. All right, let's give ourselves a bit more space um, and we'll have a look at part C. I've reproduced the triangle here. So we want to find the angle ACB and give it to three sig figs. So there we are, I'll call it X. And remember this question mark is not a question mark anymore, we just worked it out, it's 26.1. So we now know, um, well we know that and the angle opposite it. Okay, and we want to know X and we know the, the side opposite X. So this is a case of the sine rule which matches together angles with the sides opposite them. And so uh, the version that we want is the version that has the angle on top because we're trying to find an angle. So the sine rule looks like this. Sine A over A is sine B over B. Um, as long as you're pairing up angles with the sides opposite them, it doesn't matter what you call the sides. In this case, sine X divided by the side opposite it, 11.7, will be equal to sine 67 divided by the length opposite that, 26.1. But let's actually just use the value that's still in our calculators. Let's use the exact value, 26.058 dot 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 dot. That will give me um, all the accuracy I need for part C. So to solve this, we've got to get rid of the 11.7 on the bottom. So we do that by multiplying. And if we multiply both sides by 11.7, on the left we're left with uh, simply sine x. On the right we now have 11.7 sine 67 over uh, same denominator, 26.05. And now it's like before, you, if you want to find the angle, you have to use the inverse function, sine to the minus 1, um, or shift sine, as it would be on your calculator. So sine to the minus 1 of all of that, 11.7 sine 67 over 26. Use the ants key for that part. Um, and shove it all in the calculator, and we get 24.4 degrees. As always, you should do a bit of a common sense check. Um, does that angle make sense? Uh, it looks about right to me.